Increased government borrowing from the domestic market is now pushing lending rates by commercial banks up again. And today, interest rates for prime borrowers have moved to 21% from 18%, slightly under a year. And that's even higher for the non-prime borrower. So this is because government is today borrowing at close to 15% and banks, the major sources of funds, or is prefer lending to the state as opposed to the private sector. Coming up, lending rates and the factors driving this phenomenon. What you would need to do as a small business to survive the hard times. And tips on how to avoid substandard goods on supermarket shelves. This month on the 15th, government committed to banning the use of polythene bags, normally known as Cavera, as the packaging material. However, those in foods and beverage industry, where Cavera is a key packaging material, feel the decision should be rethought. Right, Rashid, it's very nice to have you on the show. Money Matters, you're welcome. Thank you very much. I'm also very glad to be here. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Now, I know you one of those interested people in, uh, uh, you know, in relation to the Kavera policy in Uganda. Yes. Uh, we'll call it policy for now. For purposes of our viewers who yes. may not know much about this debate, yes. what are the issues that we're talking about? Yes. What are the major issues that you are concerned about as players yes. in this industry? Um, as players, the first concern is Uganda National Bureau of Standards is established by government to ensure that safety quality products are availed to the citizens of Uganda. Mm -hmm. That is the baseline. Mm -hmm. And the key is quality has to be availed to all Ugandans. Quality is, not, is never meant to be availed to only a few wealthy Ugandans who can afford. Now, once you, turned, you start to segregate the consumers, then therein lies the problem. Once you start considering safety for only people who are able, then therein lies the problem. As businessmen, we know, and we all ought to know as Ugandans, that economies of scale will always be the overriding principle in how business is done. Mm. People who supply water, who manufacture water, will also will only do so considering that they are going to, at the end of the day to make a profit out of it. Mm -hmm. If there is no profit, of course, no one is going to do it. Mm -hmm. However, I, I don't blame any businessman because of course, cost of production plus a, a little interest will result into how much I will sell my product. So you're raising that concern in relation to the impending or promised ban on, on, on the Cavera. Uh, which is slated for the 15th of this month, right? Um, among others, uh, that ban in particular refers to uh, the Cavera's uh, general packaging solution. Mm -hmm. What we are concerned in, uh, in is uh, what we are concerned with is not only that, mm -hmm. but specifically also the Cavera in the food packaging industry. Okay. And we are arguing that we need to make more research into whether or not the Cavera is harmful to human beings mm -hmm. and whether or not its benefits are lesser than, uh, the, than its disadvantages. Mm -hmm. And then once we, we sit on, on a round table and realize that maybe it is too bad, then we, we agree on our way forward. For purposes of this discussion, yes. I'll give you some pointers. Yes. Of course, some of the arguments yes. that have been raised, especially by um, you know, the environmentalists, as yes. they prefer being called. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, they talk about the damaging effect of the cavera on the soil. Uh, they talk about the, uh, um, basically the pollution uh, uh, um, impact or effect that comes out of the Cavera. Yes. Um, do you think, from where you stand, mm. that actually the benefits uh, out of maintaining the Cavera as a packaging material for, you know, in the food chain, yes. far outweigh the disadvantages? Uh, let me first address the issue of uh, the Cavera in relation to the environment. Mm -hmm. To assess the impact a product has on the environment, we need to understand that we don't start with the disposal, as is their claim. Mm -hmm. You start most especially from what we call cradle to grave. Mm -hmm. From its birth, so to speak, from its raw materials, how it is produced, all the way to how it is used, 
or reused and how it's either disposed of or recycled. Mm -hmm. And the story goes on again. Now, if you look at the Cavera, the only challenges that it really has in regard to the environment are at the point of disposal. Now, point of disposal, the Cavera does not dispose itself, does not litter itself. Mm -hmm. It is human beings that, that litter them. So if you have a problem with solid waste management, and that cannot be the issue, uh, cannot be a, a, a ground for you per se alone to, uh, to, to, to say no to the Cavera. Then you just need to check yourself and say, how best can we now organize ourselves into a better solid waste management uh, program? Mm -hmm. Do we have other options we can use other than the Cavera? Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, granted, you don't deny the fact that the Cavera has some impact on the yes. environment. Mm -hmm. Do we have something that is of less impact to the environment that we can use you know, to uh, continue ensuring that there's water, for instance, yes. um, <clears throat> available to the masses, but at the same time we're doing less damage you know, to, 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 to the environment? What are the options? Yeah, factually speaking, and uh, again, this is the essence of dialogue and research. Mm -hmm. When you look at the option of the PET bottle, mm. that is the plastic bottle that we use, look at its volume, look at its weight, compared to the Cavera. The film that I use, for example, one circuit of 300 mils, will, will weigh, give or take, five to six grams. One bottle top of that PET bottle will weigh approximately the same. Mm -hmm. So now, you're using more plastic here. Using more plastic means you're using more energy. More energy means more greenhouse emissions. It, that is the same argument, and unfortunately, with, with using uh, paper out of, out of, out of trees. Mm -hmm. I know it sounds good for someone to think that, you know, using paper is maybe green. It mm -hmm. is not green actually. The paper bags. The paper bags. Mm -hmm. Because paper has a very long, tedious, and complex process before you use it as the paper you see. Mm -hmm. The energy, the chemicals, the water that is used in the manufacture of paper is so much that the greenhouse emissions are just incredible. I'm requesting again, let us do our research. Because actually on that note, I was going to ask yes. you, and because, and I mean, people can boil their water, or people used to take water yes. even before, you know, the onslaught of bottled water, yes. or what most people call mineral water. Yes. I mean, we had people taking water and uh, surviving and living. Yes. Yes. The, the issue is, as I told you, the more we move forward, mm. the more technological advancements come in play, the more we think of convenience. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, as I usually say, if you watch, for example, the air crash investigation, yeah. everybody will, will first get grief stricken and say, but these planes crash and kill a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But immediately at the end of the program, they say, this helped us improve on our radar systems. This helped us improve on how we check people who are going to, you know, mm -hmm. these terrorist attacks and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. This is what should be done. Mm -hmm. The challenges with the Cavera and the, with, uh, with the waste disposal should not be a basis for you to say, we have now stopped mm -hmm. the Cavera. Mm -hmm. On that note, Rashid, yes. thank you very much. Thank it's been nice talking to you. Thank you very much. Thank you for finding time. Thank you very much. Please. Interest rates are already taking an upward trend with the premium lending rates today quoted at 21% from a low of 18% under a year ago. In this segment, we explore the funding driving this, the impact on business and how the situation can be cooled before it gets out of hand. Lending rates have moved upwards by approximately 3%, prompting jitters from borrowers, particularly from the business community, who say the weak shilling is breaking them down. Volatility cannot be controlled over the dollar because the exchange rate is moving up and down, and it will never be, the business will not be predictable, and when there is no predictability, then this is a very big challenge to the business community. On the other hand, a cross section of lenders maintain that a wide range of factors have since the start of the year combined, prompting these moves. So the way we think about pricing is it's a base rate, there's a default risk, a liquidity premium, credit risk. So we have a build up into how we get to the lending rate. So just because base rate remains uh, flat doesn't mean that we, have different, we don't have different views on the quality of the risk that we're writing. 
Interest rates across the banking sector have seen Standard Chartered Bank move from 18.5% to 21.5%. Standbank remains at 20%. DFCU Bank from 21% to 22%. Centenary Bank at 20%. In the current situation, of course, the first point would be is to take a, a local currency loan. Yeah, it, it's really dangerous to take a foreign currency loan at the moment, especially if you're going to invest it in a business that earns in local currency. Yeah, based on the current market situation. And secondly, uh, I would think uh, we really need to uh, think about terms that would be uh, a little bit fixed than flexible ones, uh, whereby, of course, uh, every time you will have to raise, the, the, the best lending rate has to rise or come down. The Uganda Bankers Association admit that customer knowledge, more so around credit access, is now very crucial under the circumstance. Now, those who got floating rates, uh, the, the prime rates that uh, the banks have been changing, ought to have known that uh, depending on the changes in the working environment, those rates may change. And also to know that those rates change not only as a result of the CBR, but many other things that, uh, you know, impinge on how banks operate. All the same, other experts on financial services are painting a brighter prospect within the economy, saying non-performing loans may not expand. Now there's a blip. Towards the end of the other blip may continue in terms of uh, weakness. But when you look at it in the long haul, in the long term, I mean... Should uh, fuel, well, global oil prices remain where they are, there is growth. There is going to be growth. We are going to recover. All right. yeah. However, Bank of Uganda argues that despite the importance of maintaining a strong fiscal regime, increased demand for credit by government has an impact on private sector lending. At a macro level, to see that we limit uh, borrowing by government from uh, the financial system because as they do it, the cost of access to credit by the private sector goes up and there is the crowding out. So fiscal policy is very critical. In 2012, high interest rates by lenders in some instances, as high as 38%, so non-performing loans explode a record high, affecting growth in many fronts. Supermarkets today have become notorious for not meeting the minimum basic requirements as stipulated by the Uganda National Bureau of Standards. The problems range from the sale of expired goods, poor storage and poor working environments. In Consumer Insight this week, we delve into what you should be worried of while carrying out shopping in some of these supermarkets. We have a problem with a lot of products on the shelf having already passed that date which the manufacturer said this product is safe. So those are some of the issues we are dealing with. Shopping from supermarkets is a concept that many have adopted because of the convenience that they provide. However, as a consumer, there's some basic information that you need to have to get the most out of your shopping experience and not get duped. Let's begin with the fact that the supermarket is charged with ensuring your satisfaction as a customer. If a product doesn't meet the standard, what happens? Who do I go to? If I take it back, do they take it back or not? The issue, especially for electricals, electricals come with guarantees. If the supermarket is going to sell this product, they take on the responsibility of that guarantee. This equipment is supposed to, lie, uh, to work for one year without disturbance. Now if it breaks down in three months time, I must be able to go back and get my guarantee. But more importantly, as a customer, you must have ample knowledge of exactly what you're buying and this should be clearly indicated on the product or commodity. The labeling is how the consumer gets to decide what product to buy. It means Every product you sell, you must be sure that it provides all the information that the consumer must read in order to make a good choice in terms of labeling. If they are these durable goods, they must also have the packing list, instructions for use, instructions for assembly, in case assembly is required. And in situations of goods that are not user-friendly or complicated in nature, the supermarket is tasked with providing personnel to make the customer's shopping experience easier. If you have a section that deals with those kind of goods, you need a competent person, a person qualified, who can speak 
the language of those goods to the consumer. Because remember, not all of us understand the goods that we buy. But it is your obligation as a person who sells to make sure that I understand what I buy. I have to ask you questions and you must be able to answer. And then you must be able to sell the product that you know actually works. It's also within your rights as a consumer to demand information of the origin of the goods and products that you're buying. This is known as traceability. It means you must have information that should guide me if I wanted to trace back where I can get that product so that I can actually be able to get that product. So on your next visit to the supermarket and with this information, do not settle for less than what you deserve. The supermarket owes you more than you may imagine and after all at the end of the day, you're spending money on these products. Commercial banks will give their reasons for raising borrowing rates as they have effective March 2015. But whatever their reasons are, they are implications to borrowers, especially small and medium enterprises. This week on Your Money, we explore the actions to take or even avoid for SMEs in the wake of raising borrowing rates. Lending rates for the dominant banks in Uganda have gone up by an average of 3%. For SMEs, holding credit or intending to can mean a few millions added to your monthly repayments. First, you must survive the storm. The interest rates will go up. There's nothing the banks can do about that. They are also in business. But if you increase the tenor of the loan, it can uh, reduce the installment to, to a manageable extent. Up until the point when interest rates are more certain, then you can revert to the, to the old pay plan. This option takes away the pressure of higher monthly payments to the bank, but it means you will pay the loan for longer. You might not have the liberty to extend your loan tenure, and yet you must survive. For instance, if your expenditure is too high, then it's ideal for an SME person to ensure that his operational cost go lower to make his, his business a bit profitable and also hedge on the risk of financial losses during the transaction. You might have been entertaining plans to expand, unlikely by acquiring some credit from the bank. Uh, this environment is not the time to expand. This is a time to survive. Uh, interest rates will go up, however, uh, shelve the expansion plans until a time when interest rate environment is certain. But the exceptions to all this. If you're dealing in a product that has uh, inelastic demand, uh, meaning if you can increase 10% or 20% and people will still buy uh, this product, and this product has few substitutes, these are people who can still, you know, they can still afford to get uh, some sort of financing uh, from the banks. However, if, like most businesses, uh, you're dealing in fast-moving consumer goods that are highly substitutable, uh, that can be you know, struck off the budget of, uh, of an ordinary income earner, should, in the meantime, stay away from accessing a new facility from the bank. Avoid converting your shilling loan to a US dollar loan because uncertainty looms across these financial markets. Phone and laptop theft across the world is quite common. However, in countries like Uganda, it is made worse by the fact that it will normally take you a while to recover one of these stolen gadgets. Simon Bertanze realized the business opportunity and finding solutions to such problems. According to reports by the Federal Bureau of Investigation, on average, 10 phones are stolen in a space of every three seconds around the world. This state of affairs has opened a window of opportunity for phone trackers like Simon Bantanze. These smartphones are really expensive and they contain various, various memories, contacts, and you wouldn't want to lose all that investment in one go. So that's how the business came up. Um, we started to install for people, ju just for trials because we can actually get the, the phone number of the person that has taken your, your phone. We can, if we want, we can take a snap using your front camera of the phone and uh, we give you the report free of charge. If this will be your first time to hear about Phone Tracker, 
you might wonder what it is and how it works. Simon explains. If you get a problem uh, with your phone, that's if after you came to us and we installed, uh, let me call it software application, um, we, once the phone number of the person who has stolen your phone gets inside the, the SIM card slot, we begin the tracking from there. So once that phone number is in, we can uh, tap whatever is around the person, what he's talking about, uh, where he's actually located at that point in time. We can also track uh, the, the messages that are coming to his phone. They're all forwarded to a specified phone number that we, we give the, the application to, to actually send the messages to. How safe this security system is, however, will be everyone's first question. This entrepreneur also says this business comes with a couple of challenges. We don't, we don't actually permit it to get into your mobile phone accounts. That's the mobile money accounts. Uh, all we do is we can either back up your contacts or your photos, but that's all we do because uh, all that is stored on a secure server. So you're, it's actually encrypted. The server is encrypted. So for us, we can't get to, to know what is in your phone. Someone says he charges for the service. According to the gadget's operating systems, that's for Android and Apple, as well as informing police after the tracking process. He also admits that phone tracking is a lucrative business. Right now we charge 25000 for that. Then for the iOS, that's the, the Apple, I should say the Apple operating system, we charge 50000 And for a laptop, it's 100000 It's a one-time payment. And the tracking is, is done free, free of charge. But of course, we don't actually retrieve the, the phone for you. Then you have to involve the police when we actually get to the culprit because you never know who the culprit is. Yes. It is now that time when we take a look at the latest in the world of markets. That's it this week on Money Matters. Thank you for watching. Greetings from the team and you can get back to us. Text us on 6565. You can also look for NTV Money Matters on Facebook. Leave your comments and views. Otherwise, I wish you the best for the rest of the viewing.